So today, uh, as promised, I'm gonna do a video on dyeing your leather seats. So back, if you go back to my first video where I was talking about how I do not like tan interior, um, the Ford has tan leather interior. I've already done the front um, and I have used this kit before, but um, I decided I'm gonna use the same product again because it just, it showed forth uh, great results. Um, so what I'm about to do is we're about to get into the back bench seat of the Ford. I'm going to go through that. I'm going to kind of show uh, how to use their products and I'll link below uh, where you can find their products uh, for a reasonable price. So instead of like converting your whole interior, say you don't have the money and you really would like to have like the newer Ford or Dodge or Chevy leather interior, but you don't quite have the money yet, but you have decent seats in your current truck. You just don't like the color. And this isn't just for truck, this is for cars. Um, shoot, even your living room. If you don't even like your leather seats that you have in your living room, uh, you can even use it on that. They even have like kits for uh, leather for house interior. So um, anyways, not to get off subject, Back to my point is that if you don't have the money to spend, you know, twenty five hundred, fifteen hundred on a whole conversion of front and back seats, which it gets expensive from a salvage truck, uh, and you're on a budget, you can get a full die kit uh, for right around I think like one hundred and fifty bucks is what I gave for this, and this comes with the thirty two in thirty two ounce bottle of dye it comes with the cleaner it comes with the sponges the 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 towels and all that stuff so we'll walk out there here in a second and i'll show you the stuff i've already used some of it so it will be kind of dirty um but you'll get the gist of it uh, but yeah so i'm currently using jet black uh, they have several options on there so if you even have a color in particular that you like um, and i know that like M, like BMWs have like red and tear on some of the M3s. They they sell that. Uh, and if you don't particularly have a preference, you can pick. You can go through there and pick any color you want. Uh, they have red, um, tan, browns, uh, all kinds of stuff. So here is the bottle. Um, it's luxury auto auto repair uh, automotive dye. Uh, I have jet black. This is the 32 in, 32 ounce bottle. This will do a full interior. Um, and I have currently, let's see if we can see. You can't, but there's, you can't see in the video, but there's like, this bottle is about half full. Uh, and I've done, the, uh, this is the driver's seat, the passenger seat, and the jumper. And I still have half I still have half a bottle and that should do this. As you can see, dude, it's, it's nasty. So we got to clean, we got to strip this. And so they give you in the kit, they give you this dynamic clean, which you can't see cause I got crap on it. Uh, I got dye on it, but dude, this stuff, I don't know what they have in this. I guess it just has directions on the bottle. I don't know what's in this, but dude, this stuff works. And so what you do is you take, in the kit let's see here so this is the this is the dye bundle that they they have and they have the instructions in here and they give you two bottles for a full interior kit so this is the second bottle i ain't even used it yet and i'll probably keep that for other stuff so here's the dye kit instructions and they have they, they list it i've watched the videos if you go to their website they have tutorial videos but they give you step-by-step -step instructions on this oh i didn't see that I have to use that all right so let's let's get this out of the way and you know it comes with the gloves i've been using them uh and here it comes with two sponges and um i've been putting it in a like a mixing cup i just pour it in here as i need just a little bit just make sure when you take this you you shake it up real good you pour it in there and you can you can apply it by sponge so dabbing it and this is about three or four coats on there and there's some spots as you can see it's still dying there's a spot in there and a crevice i need to get still but overall i mean you can tell i mean this stuff i mean it's not like it rubs off or gets off on your hands or anything i mean my hands are already dirty from working outside 
But um, I mean, this stuff doesn't rub off. I still need to go through and touch it up. And the plastics, I dyed as well, because these were tan, as you can see, on the back side. I need to clean the back side. But I've already sanded and um, scuffed and painted those as well. And what I'm using on that is you can get this dupy color um, at your at AutoZone, O'Reilly's, Advanced Auto. This stuff works really well, and I've used it in my Dodge. And I know people frown upon painting plastics, but don't use regular paint. You need the vinyl and fabric uh, specialty coating paint. There's some there's flexible finish in this that causes it not to flake off, and it's all about prepping. And so what I usually do for this, and I know I'm going off a sidebar here because I'm kind of tackling two things at once. I use this Purple Power Extreme Clean Cleaner and Degreaser, and what I do is I I spray down the part and then I take a scuff pad and I scuff it down real good and then wipe it off. I hose it off, clean it, and then I do it again. I scuff it one more time and you, you want to get like a dull finish on it. Um, I wouldn't recommend, you could use sandpaper like maybe a 400 or maybe like a 600, but I would, I would not go with a sandpaper just because you don't want to sand off like the wrinkle finish on on your part you don't want to because then it i don't know you're just gonna get deep scratches in it and i don't think it would look that great but to each is there and if you want the smooth finish then by all means go for it but i just recommend uh this scuff pad the red i know they these guys um the leather kit they come with the gray and so what you would do is you take this now granted some of this is dyed because I had my jumper box sitting on here and I was just using it as a bench to clean it. But you wanna you wanna spray it down. And you can already see just the dirt and grime. And, and you really gotta clean it because it's all about the prep work on this leather. You want all the human oils and dog hair or dog piss and shit that whatever's been on this seat you want to try to get all these chemicals up off of this and you want a good base it's just like anything you're painting and in, in on a car or automotive it's all about the prep work you want your you want your your starting base to be clean and free of debris oil any kind of chemicals you you just really want to get it nice and clean um, and it comes with which my this rag is I've already been using but it comes with this rag and the kit and you you get it cleaned off and you can already see I mean this is literally just what two minutes you guys have seen just cleaning this so you want to do this to the entire seat to all the leather you want to get all this stuff off so it's going to take a few minutes um, I'm going to put it up on the tripod and I'll show you guys um, me going through it and you'll see the process and the key thing is is that they say is you really want to go with light light layers you don't want to you don't want to pack this stuff on real heavy and that's the same way with the um, the plastics you want to do light spray coats you just want to mist it on there when you're spraying it I'm you can spray the, the auto leather dye on there you can put it in a paint gun uh, automotive HVLP gun and spray it. I don't, I'm not doing that just because I don't want a lot of overspray. I already have issues with overspray in this house garage from painting. Um, I plan on buying a blow up paint booth at some point, but my wife is getting like irritated because of all the overspray and me having to constantly clean this garage out. I know it's a mess right now, but hopefully she don't watch this. But anyways, back to the point. Um, light coats, it's going to probably, from what I've gathered on the tan, going from tan to black, it's taken me about four coats. And uh, I will, here, you know what? You guys probably do need to see this. So, I'll just do it right here. So, what I'm doing is I'm taking this, by the way, probably wear your gloves. So, what I'm doing is I go in here, I get a little bit, I dab it on there. And then we're coming over and you can, I prefer not to dab it because you see the bubbles that you're getting in it. I don't, 
like to do that, but if you use a heat gun after you put it on, um, it'll take it off. So, which I have that, and I'm I am using a heat gun, uh, but to kind of speed up the process. Do not bake the leather with the heat gun because it'll ruin your leather. It will cause the the leather to bubble up because if it gets too high. I just kind of mitts like kind of hold it back about you know six eight inches and just kind of keep it moving in different areas to kind of help dye this and speed up the process because you want you want your layer to be fully um dry before you go on to the next one so look I'm, i just did that so i'm gonna use it i have this uh freaking awesome pink <laughs> heat gun um so just turn that on and you can kind of see how it just dissipates the bubbles which you can do that but the, the thing is is if you look you got these higher spots in there. You don't you don't want that because that's gonna go that's gonna show up in your your coating when you're doing that. So oh falling. So I usually I like to brush it on there like this and try to keep keep it even, even coats. So you'll um, let that dry and then you'll come back and then you'll do another coat and you'll just keep doing it until you get it nice and coated. So I'll go through that. The other thing is I wanna talk about is this, this piece comes out. So I'm gonna to have to probably unbolt this so I can get in there. There's like a screw on each side. I'll probably have to take this out uh, and do that separate so I can get into these around this edge and try to tan it. Cause dude guys, the more you can take off of these seats and break it down, whether you have plastics, trim, like this, this handle may not be, yeah, I'll probably have to take the handle off so you can get to the complete seat. And then back in here, you have like the carpet. So I'll have to dye that as well. Not with this uh, dye because that is for like leather dye but I'll use like a different kind of dye for that. I know I've used on carpets is RIT, uh, RIT fabric dye, there's like synthetic. You can, you can get it at like a Hobby Lobby or any kind of Michaels or any kind of fabric store, or you can buy it online, Amazon has it, uh, whatever color. You just concentrate it with uh, water and you mix it to your liking and then you spray it on there, let it dry the same concept just do light layers and it'll eventually die that's what we used on the carpet i still got to hit it a couple more times that stuff is super cheap i'll link that stuff below as well i'll just link you to the black but you can get various colors um but that's it so let's get to it i'm going to get you on the tripod and we're going to go through this and you'll see the progress of the seat till the end and then when i get done uh, I'll let you guys see the close-ups and what I did. The other thing that I'm also doing to clean it up is these seat brackets um, are nasty. Um, this dude clearly had a dog, and I have freaking German shepherd hair everywhere that I've had to clean up. All, I mean, ugh. Ugh. It's gross. I hate it. So I'm going to clean up the, the black brackets, the seat brackets that bolt to the floorboard. I'm going to clean that up as, as well paint that black. I want everything to be fresh. I like things to look new. We're going to have this interior in this Ford freaking perfect. We're going to have her looking good and we're going to bring her back to life. And this is going to make somebody uh, a nice truck. Don't pay attention to that rear bumper. It is sagging. I don't have it fully bolted up because it is getting paint matched. That is a 2011, 2016 rear bumper, by the way. Um, so anyways, that's that. Let's get to it, guys.
Also, if you don't wait and make sure that your, your layer before is completely dry, if you don't do that, when you go to lay the second layer down and you go to start swiping the new on, you're gonna see that it's gonna to wanna to peel, pull it up. Like it doesn't, it's not, it's not sticking. That means that two things, either that area you didn't clean very well, you didn't get, there's some kind of chemical or oils or something on the seat that needs to be cleaned off, or that first layer, the layer before that you just put on wasn't fully cured or dried enough and so that's why it's picking it up because it's still wet. It's wanting to stick to the, the, the other wet that's on your sponge. So make sure, that's why I was using that heat gun to kind of speed up the process so you're not sitting around waiting and having to double check. Like I can see, you'll see like spots, like over there on that seat, you can see it's wet, it's a little thicker. So I, I'll probably just stay away from that area when I go to dab it on or I'll just smooth it out. But you really want to make sure that it's fully dry to the touch where you can rub your hand on it and you don't have um, dye on your hand. So make sure, like even sitting out in the sun is a good good way, even though I probably wouldn't do that in the sun. I would probably do it in the shade, even though I got a section over here that's in the sun, it definitely dries quicker over here. But um, that's why just applying that heat is going to speed up the process, but just don't ever heat your leather. Uh, but just make sure you're doing that. Also, on your seams, make sure you probably lay it in a little thicker because you probably you kind of got to push it and dab it down in there um, and then go back over and swipe it because you want to get it down in the crevices. Uh, otherwise, when you go to swipe, this, this seems to stay a little wetter in there because it's down in the crevice a little bit. But make sure you get down in your seams real good and you get in there so it's all dyed evenly. You don't want to be going back over and finished all your layers and then you go to put it back in the vehicle and then you see like your tan or your other color that was original seat was ble bleeding through or whatever. So just make sure, typically, I mean there's different ways you can go about dyeing. There's different ways you can go about dyeing this. Typically you probably want to go and hit all your seams first and then work your way in from the seams. That's probably a better way. I'm just kind of willy-nilly, kind of just trying to knock it out, really. But, like I said, it's not a show truck. I'm just trying to uh, clean it up and then eventually get rid of the truck. So here is the final product I just finished up today. Um, it's freaking 90 degrees outside today, but uh, there's a couple uh, areas that need to be finished up or touched up, but I'm not too worried about it right now. Overall, it turned out good. Um, here is the product. Um, see, it's probably a couple little spots here and there, but the back seat's done. Um, pretty pleased with it. I'll be putting these back into the Ford this week. I'll probably set them in there tonight just to get an idea. Um, but uh, pretty clean. So back to what I said, guys, if you're looking for an easy, uh, cheap mod to change your seats over instead of buying a whole kit, this is one of the ways that I would go about it. Um, so that's it. So if you have any questions, just comment below. Um, and I guess like, subscribe, and share. Uh, the next video I'll be posting up, um, I'm gonna do, uh, I don't know, probably, I'll probably do some taillights and headlights paint match. I got asked on Instagram about that, so might just do, do a video on that. Um, so we'll probably start out with tails, that's a little bit easier, and then I'll do headlights pretty much the same concept. Headlights is a little bit tougher to do um, just because it seems like the, the seal that gets put on the headlights is a little bit tougher to work with. You just gotta heat them up a little bit longer, but just be looking for that. And until then guys, see ya.